Which of the following are examples of social engineering attacks? Choose two. Is it A, denial of service or dogs? Is it B, phishing? Is it C, cross-site scripting or XSS? Or is it D, zero-day exploit? You now have five seconds. And the correct answers are B and C, phishing and cross-site scripting, or XSS. Phishing involves tricking users into revealing information. XSS injects malicious scripts into websites. Imagine phishing as someone pretending to be a bank and asking you for your account details. And for the incorrect answers, denial of service or DOS is not a social engineering attack, and zero-day exploit is a software vulnerability. And for the next question for exam, question number two. And the question states, what security measure helps protect data at rest on a mobile device? Choose one. Is it A, multi-factor authentication or MFA? Is it B, disk encryption? Is it C, intrusion detection system or IDS? Or is it D, application whitelisting? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, disk encryption. Disk encryption secures data by encoding it on storage. Imagine disk encryption as locking a treasure chest with a code. And for the incorrect answers, MFA or multi-factor authentication protects access, not data at rest, intrusion detection system or IDS monitors for attacks, not encryption, and application whitelisting controls software, not data encryption. And for the next question for exam, question number three. And the question states, what is an example of a technical control for mitigating security risks? Choose one. Is it A, security awareness training? Is it B, employee background checks? Is it C, firewall configuration? Or is it D, written security policies? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, firewall configuration. Firewalls are technical controls that filter network traffic. Think of a firewall as a gatekeeper controlling who enters a building. And for the incorrect answers, security awareness training, this educates users, but isn't a technical control. Employee background checks, this relates to personnel, not technical measures, and written security policies. These are administrative controls, not technical. And for the next question for exam, question number four. And the question states, which of the following are examples of a malicious software? Choose two. Is it A, firewall? Is it B, Trojan? Is it C, router? Or is it D, ransomware? You now have five seconds. And the correct answers are B and D, Trojan and ransomware. Trojans deceive users into downloading malicious files. Ransomware encrypts files for ransom. Imagine a Trojan as a gift containing a harmful surprise. And for the incorrect answers, firewall protects systems, not malicious software, and router is a networking device, not malicious software. And for the next question for exam, question number five. And the question states, what is the primary purpose of a security policy in an organization? Choose one. Is it A, providing network performance optimization? Is it B, defining operating system requirements? Is it C, guiding security decisions and behaviors? Or is it D, ensuring compliance with building codes? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, guiding security decisions and behaviors. Security policies set expectations for security practices. Think of a security policy as a rule book for employees' security actions. And for the incorrect answers, providing network performance optimization policies address security, not optimization, defining operating system requirements, requirements are technically technical specifications, and ensuring compliance with building codes. This is unrelated to digital security. And for the next question, for example, question number six. And the question states, during an incident response, what is the primary goal of the containment phase? Choose two. Is it A, identifying the root cause? Is it B, restoring normal operations? Is it C, analyzing the attack vectors? Or is it D, notifying affected parties? You now have five seconds. And the correct answers are A and B, identifying the root cause and restoring normal operations. Containment involves stopping the incident spread and restoring normality. Imagine containment as isolating a contagious virus to prevent its spread. And for the incorrect answers, analyzing the attack vectors. This comes after containment and notifying affected parties. Notification is, import is important, but is not primary uh, in containment. And for the next question, for example, question number seven. And the question states, what is the potential security risk associated with IoT devices? Choose two. Is it A, limited data storage? Is it B, strong encryption? Is it C, lack of standard security controls? Or is it D, high processing power? You now have five seconds.
and the quick answers are C and A, lack of standard security controls and limited data storage. IoT devices often lack standardized security controls and can't store as much data as larger devices. Imagine IoT devices as small safes with weak, weaker locks. And for the incorrect answers, strong encryption is a security measure, not a risk, and high processing power. IoT devices have limited processing power. And for the next question, for example, question number eight. And the question states, what is the purpose of a demilitarized zone or DMZ in a network architecture? Choose one. Is it A, securing data in transit? Is it B, isolating sensitive data? Is it C, providing an isolated network for external services? Or is, is it D, enforcing endpoint security? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, providing an isolated network for external devices. A DMZ separates external devices from, from the internal network. Think of a DMZ as a security checkpoint for visitors before entering a city. And for the incorrect answers, securing data in transit, this relates to encryption, not DMZs. Isolating sensitive data, a DMZ isolates services, not data, and enforcing endpoint security. This focuses on devices, not external services. And for the next question, for example, question number nine. And the question states, which of the following are examples of biometric authentication methods? Choose two. Is it A, password? Is it B, fingerprint scanner? Is it C, token? Or is it D, retina scanner? And now five seconds. And the correct answers are B and D, fingerprint scanner and retina scanner. Biometric authentication uses unique biological traits for access. Imagine biometrics as using your fingerprint to unlock a smartphone. And for the incorrect answers, password is a knowledge-based authentication method, and token, tokens are physical devices, not biological traits. And for the last question, for example, question number 10. And the question states, what is the primary goal of threat hunting in cybersecurity? Choose one. Is it A, mitigating attacks? Is it B, responding to incidents? Is it C, identifying and stopping threats proactively? Or is it D, implementing security controls? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, identifying and stopping threats proactively. Threat hunting involves seeking out and neutralizing threats before they cause damage. Think of threat hunting as detectives looking for clues before crimes happen. And for the incorrect answers, mitig mitigating attacks, this comes after identifying threats, responding to incidents, this is incident response, not threat hunting, and implementing security controls, this is part of security, security implementation, not hunting. If there's one piece of advice that I would dare to offer you is that you keep your composure and try and focus on the exam questions and what is being asked of you. CompTIA doesn't formulate vague or trick questions, so as long as you dedicate at least half an hour a day to study, whether it's from books, videos, or practice exams, I'm 100% convinced that you will pass your exam. It very much uh, depends on your personal preference. Some people might find it easier to learn what's watching videos. Some people might find it easier to learn from reading books, etc. The CompTIA exams are not difficult. It's only difficult only if you decide to make them difficult by putting nonsense into your head like I'm not smart enough or I can't do this or I don't have enough time etc. Realize that whenever you're telling yourself things like that you're doing yourself a disservice by demoralizing yourself and when referring to exams that's obviously a bad idea. If you put a bit of effort into practice exams and reading a book or watching a video even for 20 or 30 minutes a day it's impossible not to progress. I run the risk of repeating myself, but the most important thing on your exam day, and I cannot stress that enough, is to take your time and read the questions carefully. Make sure you understand what is being asked of you, and in order to do that, you have to be familiar with the CompTIA exam objectives. Okay, I think I ranted enough for today. Ladies and gents, this is the end of our exam. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you guys next time. Peace!